humankind has always built tools to count and calculate. We started with our fingers, then abacuses, then mechanical calculators. Today, we live in a world powered by classical computers. These amazing machines, from your smartphone to the most powerful supercomputers, work with bits. A bit is a simple switch. It can be either on or off, a one or a zero. This binary language is the foundation of our digital age. It has allowed us to map genomes, send messages across the globe in an instant, and simulate complex systems. But there are some problems so massive, so profoundly complex, that even our best supercomputers would take billions of years to solve them. To tackle these cosmic scale challenges, we need a new kind of computer. We need a quantum computer. Unlike the simple on or off bits of classical computing, quantum computers use qubits. A qubit is a marvel of the subatomic world. Thanks to a principle called superposition, a qubit can be a one, a zero, or both at the same time. Think of it like a spinning coin. While it's in the air, it's not quite heads and not quite tails. It's a blend of both possibilities. Only when it lands does it choose a side. Qubits exist in this state of multiple possibilities, allowing them to process a vast amount of information simultaneously. This ability to explore many potential outcomes at once gives quantum computers their almost unimaginable power. They don't just calculate one path, they explore a whole landscape of solutions all at once. Another spooky and wonderful quantum property is entanglement. Albert Einstein famously called it spooky action at a distance. When two qubits are entangled, they become linked in a profound way, no matter how far apart they are. If you measure one qubit and find it's a zero, you instantly know its entangled partner is a one. Their fates are intertwined. This connection creates a powerful network of information. By harnessing both superposition and entanglement, a quantum computer can perform calculations that are simply beyond the reach of any classical machine. It's like having an orchestra, where every musician can play every possible note at the same time, creating a symphony of computation. This isn't just a theoretical dream. All around the world, scientists and engineers are building these machines. They are delicate, complex instruments that must be shielded from the slightest disturbance. They often operate in temperatures colder than the deepest parts of outer space. Why? Because the quantum world is fragile. The slightest vibration or change in temperature can cause the qubits to decohere, to fall out of their special quantum state and lose their information. The journey to build a useful quantum computer is a quest to control the most fundamental and most delicate aspects of reality itself. It's a journey into a realm that defies our everyday intuition. Building a powerful quantum computer is one of the greatest engineering challenges of our time. The biggest hurdle is something called quantum error. Because qubits are so sensitive to their environment, they are prone to making mistakes. A tiny bit of heat or a stray magnetic field can flip a qubit's value, ruining a calculation. For a long time, the more qubit scientists added to a processor, the more errors they got. It was a frustrating paradox. To make the computer more powerful, you needed more qubits, but more qubits meant more noise and more errors. It seemed like a dead end. How could you ever build a reliable machine out of such unreliable parts? Recently, the team at Google's Quantum AI Lab announced a monumental breakthrough. They revealed a new processor named the Willow Chip. With this chip, they achieved something that many thought was years away, scalable quantum error correction. For the first time, as they added more qubits, the overall error rate of the system actually went down. They had figured out how to use some qubits to check on their neighbors, find errors, and correct them in real time, without destroying the delicate quantum information. This is a game changer. It's like having a self-tuning orchestra that can instantly fix any musician's mistake, allowing the symphony to continue flawlessly. This achievement shifts quantum computing from a purely scientific pursuit to a true engineering pathway. It proves that building a large-scale, fault-tolerant quantum computer is not a question of if, but when. The experiment performed on the Willow chip involved a calculation so complex that it would take the world's most powerful classical supercomputer an estimated 10 septillion years to complete. That number is a 1 followed by 25 zeros. The Willow chip did it in a matter of minutes. This isn't just a faster computer. It's a fundamentally different way of interacting with the fabric of reality to find answers. So what does this mean for the future? A working, error-corrected quantum computer could revolutionize everything. It could help us design new medicines by simulating molecules with perfect accuracy. It could lead to the discovery of new materials for creating hyper-efficient batteries and solar panels. It could optimize global logistics, untangle financial markets, and break new ground in artificial intelligence. 
The milestone reached with the Willow Chip isn't just another step. It's the moment we crossed a critical threshold. We have finally started to tame the beautiful chaos of the quantum realm and are on the verge of harnessing its incredible power. The sheer speed of quantum computers like Willow is so baffling that it pushes scientists to ask profound questions about how it's even possible. Where does this incredible computational power come from? One of the most mind-bending speculative ideas connects it to the theory of multiple dimensions or the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. This theory suggests that every time a quantum measurement is made, the universe splits. For every possible outcome, a separate parallel universe springs into existence. In one universe, the qubit is a zero. In another, it's a one. It's a staggering thought, an infinite tree of branching realities. Some physicists and computer scientists, including leaders at Google's Quantum Lab, have floated the idea that a quantum computer isn't just calculating in our universe. They speculate that the qubits, existing in a state of superposition, might be tapping into these other dimensions or parallel universes to perform their calculations simultaneously. In this view, the quantum computer is outsourcing parts of its calculation to a vast number of other realities and then gathering the results in our own. This would explain its exponential advantage over a classical computer, which is stuck operating in only one universe at a time. It's an awe-inspiring, almost mystical interpretation of how these machines function. It is absolutely crucial to understand that this is pure speculation. It is a philosophical and theoretical interpretation, not a proven scientific fact. There is currently no experiment that can prove the existence of these other universes or show that a quantum computer is accessing them. It's a way of trying to make sense of the deeply weird and counterintuitive rules of the quantum world. Science often uses metaphors and interpretations to guide thinking, but these ideas must always be tested against hard evidence. The many worlds theory is a fascinating lens through which to view quantum mechanics, but it remains on the very edge of scientific thought. This idea highlights a beautiful aspect of science, the constant dance between what we can prove and what we can imagine. The mathematics of quantum mechanics work perfectly well without needing to invoke other universes. The equations predict the outcomes of experiments with incredible accuracy. But as humans, we have a deep need to understand why. Why is the world this way? The idea that quantum computation is powered by a multiverse is a compelling story, but for now, it is just that, a story. It's a thrilling narrative that inspires us to keep pushing the boundaries of knowledge, but it is not yet in the realm of established science. When we want to look for hard evidence about the nature of our cosmos, we turn to instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST. This telescope is a triumph of engineering, designed to see the universe in infrared light. It can peer through cosmic dust clouds to witness the birth of stars. It can analyze the atmospheres of distant exoplanets, searching for the chemical signatures of life. The JWS captures stunning, real images of galaxies forming in the early universe, of stellar nurseries, and of the faint light from the most distant objects we have ever observed. Every image it sends back is a piece of solid data, a direct observation of our single magnificent universe. It's important to be crystal clear. There is no connection between the discoveries of the JWST and the speculative theories about quantum computers and other dimensions. The James Webb Space Telescope has not found any evidence of invisible dimensions or parallel universes. Its mission is to observe the physical, astronomical universe that we can see and measure. The excitement around Google's quantum breakthrough, on the other hand, comes from its computational power, which has led some to theorize about other dimensions as a possible explanation. The telescope gives us facts about our cosmos. The quantum theory offers a speculative glimpse into the nature of reality itself. This is where the line between science and science fiction becomes so important. Science is built on evidence, on experiments that can be repeated and verified. Speculation is the creative, imaginative engine that proposes new ideas to be tested. The idea that a quantum computer accesses a multiverse is an exciting piece of speculation. The images from the JWS are hard scientific evidence. Both have their place. Speculation pushes us to dream of what might be possible, while rigorous observation and experimentation tell us what is real. Confusing the two can lead to misunderstanding, but embracing both allows for the greatest leaps in human understanding. As we stand here on the threshold of a new era, we are armed with two incredible tools for exploration. We have telescopes like the JWS, which let us look outward to the farthest reaches of space and time.
and we have emerging technologies like quantum computers, which let us look inward to the deepest and strangest rules that govern reality itself. We don't know if we will ever find proof of other dimensions, but the quest to find out, the drive to build better tools, ask bigger questions, and explore every possibility, is what defines us as a species. The future of science is a journey into the unknown, and it has never looked more exciting.